I'm not the biggest fan of rubbing chocolate on my belly, but if it helps me get rid of visceral fat, then I'm in. There's some interesting research surrounding chocolate, or should I say the fat that makes up chocolate, which we'll talk about in a minute, and having a positive effect on visceral fat. Now, it's not the chocolate itself, okay? What it is is the cocoa butter cocoa mass, right? It's steric acid. So steric acid is a saturated fat, and you're gonna find it in fish, you're gonna find it in meat, you're gonna find it in cocoa butter, okay? You're gonna find it in uh, even like heavy cream and some dairy, okay? I just use chocolate because I'm just excited because the main fat, the main saturated fat of chocolate is steric acid. So I wanna jump right into this study, but first I kinda of have to outline what visceral fat is in case you don't know. Visceral fat is the fat that is underneath the unsightly kind of jiggly fat. It's underneath it. It's the fat that surrounds your organs and potentially gives you a pot belly, right? So it kind of protrudes everything out. It has a lot of metabolically active components to it and that's what makes it so dangerous and so bad. So when you look at a lot of different things, we really say, okay, if we could lose one kind of fat, it would probably be visceral fat because subcutaneous fat, although unsightly and although contributing to a bad BMI and all this and that and other metabolic issues, visceral fat probably packs the most punch, bang for the buck when it comes down to negative metabolic and just general health effects. So there was a study that was published in the journal PLOS1, okay? Now, granted, this was a mice study, okay? So does it directly translate into humans? Not 100%, okay? But we have to take things with a grain of salt, or in this case, a grain of mouse chow. This particular study took a look at 40 mice, okay? And it divided them into four different groups. Okay, one group ate a high steric acid diet. One group ate a low fat diet, okay, where they didn't add a whole lot of other fats. Another group ate a high corn oil diet, and another group ate a high safflower oil diet, okay? And then they monitored them, and then they checked some interesting things, and the results were fascinating. They found the steric acid group ended up having a 40% reduction in visceral fat. That's tremendous, okay? So, what the heck is going on here? How does steric acid, this random saturated fat, really contribute to potential visceral fat loss? Well, a lot of it is a hypothesis based upon what the researchers were looking at, but it adds up pretty well. What they found is that steric acid, again, the saturated fat that's in cocoa butter, that's in like poultry, in fish, in dairy, okay? Not palmitic acid, not these other saturated fats, but steric acid promotes what is called apoptosis, which is cellular death, or cytotoxicity, like basically cellular toxicity, of a pre-adipocyte. Okay, an adipocyte is a fat cell. A pre-adipocyte is a pre-fat cell, something that can turn into a fat cell. So if we have more pre-adipocytes, we have more potential for them to turn into regular fat cells. Well, if those pre-adipocytes go through apoptosis, it means that they die those cells die. I kind of want a pre-fat cell to die, right? Or it can trigger cytotoxicity where they just become essentially not working right, okay? Now here's what's going on with visceral fat and here's how steric acid like plays a role. With visceral fat, we have a specific protein. This protein is called CIAP2. And what this CIAP2 does is it makes it so that normally with visceral fat, apoptosis is prevented. Okay, so when this protein is present, apoptosis doesn't really occur. We remember, we want apoptosis to occur. We don't want those pre-fat cells. We want those pre-adipocyte cells to go away. So in visceral fat, this protein is overexpressed, meaning we have even more of stopping this apoptosis. Well, it looks as though steric acid comes in and sort of inhibits the expression of this CIAP2. If we inhibit the expression of the CIAP2, then we allow the pre-adipocytes, the pre-fat cells, to go through their sort of natural death cycle that they should be going through so that maybe we don't end up with this exponential like cycle of visceral fat growth. Now granted, this was in mice, okay? So we can't 100% say it's gonna happen in humans, but I'll take anything that I can that tells me I can eat more chocolate. Um, Today's video, by the way, is sponsored by Thrive Market. So I put a link down below. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. And I mentioned them because they're relevant with this video because their chocolate selection is awesome. So if you're like me and you like chocolate, I'm not saying that any chocolate from Thrive Market is doing any specific thing. 
I'm just saying I like their chocolate. So they have a bunch of different keto chocolates, they have lower carb chocolates, lower sugar chocolates. Anyway, that link is down below. So what you do is you can go there, you can sort by different diet type. It allows you to filter whatever your diet you're doing. It makes life so easy and then it just gets delivered right to your doorstep in a couple of days. So the link down below will save you 25% off of your first order, but it will also get you a free gift when you use that link down below. So big thank you to Thrive for being a sponsor on this channel and check them out. Now I have an additional study and this one is with humans, okay? Now this one is much more on like mitochondrial function, okay? So this study was published in the journal Nature Communications and this looked at humans and what was interesting is it put people on a low fat vegan diet for two days, okay? This is, you know, whatever, right? And then at the end of the two days, it gave them a banana milkshake. I would do anything for a banana milkshake right now. It sounds super, actually banana doesn't sound that good. I really want more, I don't know what I want, but I don't want a banana milkshake. But either way, they gave them a banana milkshake. Okay, and one banana milkshake didn't have anything added to it. Another banana milkshake had, guess what? Steric acid, that same saturated fat that we've been talking about, added to it. And they wanted to look at a few things. So they found that the group that had the banana milkshake with the steric acid, a few hours after having it, ended up having improvements and increases in mitochondrial fusion. We want mitochondrial fusion to occur because what happens is when mito mitochondria are the powerhouse in the cell, right? They take carbs, turn it into fuel. They take fat, turn it into fuel, right? Oversimplification, but essentially very important for fat burning, for energy manufacturing. So mitochondria will fuse together. And when they do that, let's say mitochondria A is lacking structure from some components that mitochondria B has. They'll fuse and they'll borrow resources from each other and fuse into a more powerful mitochondria instead of two decrepit ones. So more fusion of mitochondria is unbelievably powerful, okay? So why this is occurring, it's a little bit vague, really. Researchers aren't even understanding completely why steric acid is contributing to this, but palmitic acid, a different kind of saturated fat, didn't do it, but steric acid did. So it's not like it's just a fat thing. It seems to be very specific with steric acid, the saturated fat. So very interesting. But the other thing that was really fascinating is they found that there were less circulating carnitines in the bloodstream. What does that mean? So if we have less circulating carnitine in the bloodstream, that means we have more carnitine that's being used to transport fats into the mitochondria, suggesting that steric acid consumption after this two-day vegan low-fat diet ended up improving the amount of lipids that were getting oxidized, potentially improving fat burning, whether that's from visceral fat or subcutaneous fat, I don't know in that particular case with this study. So it's just more evidence. I love chocolate. I probably eat two ounces of unsweetened or lightly sweetened or monk fruit stevia sweetened chocolate per day, whether I am on a low carb protocol or not. I always find the benefits of it. I'm always trying to find more research that further, I don't know, enhances my ability to go eat chocolate or at least enriches my desire to. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out our sponsor Thrive Market and I will see you tomorrow.